Hello everyone, my name is Fabrice. Thank you for joining us for this uh, Ask Us Anything session uh, from uh, San Francisco here in our brand new uh, recording studio. Um, I'm here with uh, CEO and founder Fabian Pinkarts. Uh, we'll um, address all your questions today. Um, the goal for this uh, Ask Us Anything session is to start an initi initiative to um, um, interact a little bit more with our community, um, get a sense of um, what your ideas are, what you think about the product, about the company, about the uh, business model. We'll address all those topics today. Uh, we'll start with a short introduction uh, of a couple of minutes. Um, we have a, a, a quite a big setup here today, uh, different um, screen sharing, different screens, different cameras angle. Uh, we'll have the chance to, uh, to go over that and um, the um, uh, goal for, for these um, YouTube live sessions is to do maybe one every month, maybe one every week. Uh, we'll see how it goes. That's all f today is our first one. And we'll um, uh, have different formats, whether it's an Ask Us Anything session, whether it is um, uh, live support maybe, or interviews. Uh, so we'll have the chance to, to take advantage of this. Um, and. Uh, so my name is Fabrice, I'm the director of the US. I, uh, I oversee the, the operations in the Americas. And without f uh, further ado, uh, let me introduce you to Fabian Pinkars, who will go over uh, a short presentation uh, of what we want to address today. Hi, so today we're gonna do 15 minutes about some news about Odoo, the product roadmap, the company, uh, some KPIs and numbers, but very quickly, because the goal of the day is to answer your questions. And after, you will be able to ask your questions about the product roadmap, the partner, the community, the business model, strategy, uh, KPI. We'll try to be the most transparent possible, so don't, don't hesitate. We'll just probably not answer to technical or development questions. Uh, not because we don't know, because I am a developer, <laughs> but uh, because we want to focus on uh, the, uh, questions that interest the most people. Yeah, as Fabri said, uh, here is the setup of the day. So we have uh, we do have a lot of material. Uh, for me, may maybe too much point of failure. So you have 50% chance that we <laughs> we have problems during the webinar because it's the first time we do that. But uh, it's kind of cool, and we are very happy with what or what we did here. So let's start with a few minutes, uh, an update about the KPIs and the company. Um, for those that do not know very well. Um, how do? We started in 2002, but I finished my university uh, in 2005, and we went from a service company uh, doing implementation service, building the products, to uh, selling maintenance with the partner network, to uh, the new business model is a selling enterprise, which is a set of extra features on top of the maintenance, which are the upgrades and, uh, and, um, and the bug fixes. So these have been the, the different pivot of the company over the past year. So we went from a name OpenERP to Odoo 2, and the software, as you can see, evolved a lot. Uh, every year is different. Uh, for those that follow Odoo uh, since years, uh, we are growing pretty fast in terms of products. Um, it's a, in terms of revenue and cash, it's a bit of a roller coaster too. Uh, we used to grow at an average growth of uh, six. Over the past ten years, we had an average growth of 69 percent per year, which is quite big for uh, some companies can do that, but only a very few companies can do that over a span of ten years. Uh, this year, the growth uh, year to date, so uh, end of May, is 78%, which is quite aggressive. And, and I think it's a proof that the, the, the product works. In terms of cash, we bootstrapped a deuce in for a few years uh, from nothing. I started alone to 2010, selling to customer. At that time, we had 100 employees. We raised 2 million of euro, of euro our first fundraising. And then we burned the cash very quickly. Uh, I think in one year, we burned 2 million. Uh, but it's good when you get some money, you want to invest it to grow fast. It's just that you don't have, you shouldn't burn too fa too too much to avoid the bankrupt. And if you uh, burn the cash too slow, you don't move forward uh, faster enough. So we did it well, and then we break even uh, in 2013, raised 7.4 millions of euro. Did the same. We mostly invested in the product uh, because the or, or, or key competitive advantage is the product. And then, uh, no, we don't need money anymore, so there will be no fundraising probably within the next years. Uh, we have four point something in the cash today. 
and uh, and we are growing organically. So it's just not because we raise money, but because we are profitable and growing. Of course, our goal is not to be profitable. I don't plan to be rich. Uh, our goal today is to invest in the people and grow the company so that we can improve the products. Some numbers very quickly. We have today 335 employees. We grow at 60, 70%, and most of our growth this year will be invested in, in, in people. Uh, last year, the growth were, were, was invested in, uh, in the break-even point, so in profitability. Now, everything we get is uh, invested in new employees or salary increase. Um, we do have 2 million of users, 788 partners all around the world offering services on the product, uh, covering 120 countries, the main ones. And those are the, the all subsidiaries. Some KPIs, we do have 1 million visitors on the website with very low marketing investment. So we do have the same visibility that the top players like NetSuite, but uh, with very low cost. Uh, that's one of the big advantage of the open source business model. So if you compare NetSuite, that has uh, 400 million, if I remember well, um, in in sales and marketing, uh, compared to us, we do have here two people working in marketing in San Francisco. Uh, or do compare to NetSuite, Google Trends measure the visibility of a brand. It's the number of people searching on the web. And you see that we are pretty much comparable of the top players, but with very low marketing investments. So very good for the cost of customer acquisition cost. OK. Whoop. I come back to my presentation. Um, so this, the latest KPI, in terms of billing, we grow at 78%. In terms of cash, we grow very quickly. I think we do uh, 450 net cash uh, every month. Uh, but the goal, of course, is to recruit new developers to boost the product. And we are today a company that is more or less 24 million uh, of euro in, in uh, the numbers here are in euros, sorry, in terms of billing. OK, let's go to the product. That's more interesting. So we have two products. We do have Odoo Community, or open source version, which is a great product. It covers a lot of things like CRM, account, uh, not account, billing, uh, inventory, manufacturing, uh, and, and, and so on. And we do have Odoo Enterprise, which is the, 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 the paid version of Odoo. Um, here are some numbers. Odoo Community is about 75% of our commits. So our res research and development efforts are uh, on commi Odoo Committee. And 25% in terms of number of commits are on Odoo Enterprise. In terms of people, it's more 82%, 18%. So we basically invest in both products very aggressively. We want to have the best open source product uh, to manage companies in the world. <laughs> I think we already did it, so now we have to find a better goal. Uh, and on the other hand, we continue investing in Odoo Enterprise to provide more value to our customers too. And Finally, the roadmap, uh, so that you know what we are working on uh, for the next two, three months. Uh, our key priorities are usability, of course, always since the past few years, we always invested in usability. So improving the software, making the software faster, uh, making our user more productive, uh, and so that we want our user to enjoy the product. So we, re we really design software for the user, not necessarily for the managers or the shareholders. We really want our users to be uh, efficient with our tools. We, are, we will launch a PaaS platform as a service. So it's like Odoo Online, a cloud platform, but for the partners, where they can host their own module with all the advantages of uh, Odoo Online. So full synchronization with GitHub, uh, run bot to test every commit you do automatically, uh, database synchronization, backups of mail servers, uh, uh, from testing to uh, um, uh, staging, to from development to staging to production in just a few clicks, uh, and so on. We work a lot on the content synchronization to, to support more and more countries. It's one of the big part of uh, the R&D department. We have done a lot of things for services companies too, from uh, project dashboard, uh, billing rates, uh, forecast, uh, resource as as allocation, and things like that. We have a big refactoring in progress on inventory and MRP. We work on website builder and e-commerce. Auto Studio, you probably have seen the latest version of Auto Studio. It's quite cool to customize uh, the product or create new apps from scratch. We are porting the software to Python 3. We will release an iOS app for iPhone users. We have a few hubs in progress, but the goal is not to add new hubs. So we focus more on improving the existing hub rather than uh, increasing the scope of Odoo, but we still have a few hubs some from time to time that we release. The next two will be the meeting scheduler, appointment scheduler that is already merged in master, and a marketing automation tool. 
all those things and a lot of others because I think we have like 500 tasks in the R&D department uh, for, uh, for, the, for this new version already uh, will be released around October 5 and of course our Odoo online user gets the new feature every two months they don't have to wait for that date oh just some news before we start next week we'll start the Odoo certification program a lot of users have asked us to, to launch this mostly for the partners uh, so they will be able to have a, to, to, to get a certification and um, yeah, uh, yeah, huge investment on our side. I think we have 400 question or 300 questions, uh, or high quality questions on the product. Um, you can already save the date or do experience, which is the event of the year for Odoo will be in October 4 and 6. Uh, and next week, the website will be launched, so you can pre-order your seat. The event is free, but if you want to participate to hold the social events, like the concert, the f for the, f the food, the dinner, and the lunch, there is a fee, but uh, not very high. I think it's around $100. Uh, and end of June, we'll increase the, the, the price of new success pack only. Uh, today, they had a discount of 30% for every new customer. Um, after the, uh, the end of June, we'll move to 25% off. Uh, for new customers. And I think I'm go, so maybe we should have a look at the chat, Fabrice. And you already have a question and try to answer everyone. All right, thank you, Fabian, for, for this uh, introduction. Um, guys, it's, uh, it's time now for you to, uh, to ask your questions. We are uh, going to look at the chat. Uh, we also have moderators in the chat to help us uh, behind the scenes. So um, we... Uh, Go for it. We'll we'll scroll and and we'll we'll pick uh, the questions that uh, that are the most interesting. Um, again, no technical questions, and we'll try to focus on the questions that are the most relevant and and the most interesting for for everyone. Do you want to start, or I have a question? Uh, so uh, I, I will start. Actually, um, there are. I've already uh, seen in the chat uh, while you were speaking, Fabian, that there were uh, several questions uh, about localizations. Uh, we have a worldwide community. We have a lot of people in the chat from all kinds of different countries, and maybe I can address the the question of the localizations. It is definitely a central point of focus for version 11. Um, we uh, intend to. Uh, work on localizations and we've already started uh, for several countries. Uh, those countries include, uh, I'll start with the Americas, uh, Canada, US, Mexico, um, um, Colombia, uh, and Peru. Uh, we're also working on, uh, of course, uh, Belgium, but also France, Switzerland, Germany, UK, Spain, uh, Luxembourg, uh, but also Singapore uh, and India. So those are... Um, in addition to all the countries we already support, of course. In addition to the countries we support. When it comes to localizations, what do we mean? We mean that uh, we are working on um, current and accurate chart of accounts, chart of taxes, uh, the various uh, local reports, legal reports, uh, as well as um, electronic invoice matters uh, and the necessary API um, calls that might be required, whether it's for tax purposes, like in the U.S. Uh, and in other countries, uh, or, or other API uh, calls that are required, whether they are government uh, required or um, um, or f very common from a feature standpoint. So that's for the questions about localizations, the countries we focus on. Uh, we already have finished a number of those uh, localization, and, and we will uh, be continuing working on them. Uh, I believe that at the current rate, we are probably uh, able to um, complete uh, localization of one country in about two months, uh, and we have several people uh, working full time on this. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that's for the topic of localizations. Yeah, and to answer a very specific question uh, in this area from Joseph, uh, yes, UBL is uh, in our plan, and I think it's already developed uh, for the localization of uh, some European countries. Um, okay, I have a new, uh, another question from Joe Lex. Uh, I need to buy or do for two people, but uh, how can I do? Because the minimum is five. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we have a minimum of uh, five users. In some countries, it's four hundred eighty dollars. In others, it's uh, one thousand eight hundred dollars. So it's range from this to that. 
Um, the reason being is that it's impossible to offer uh, unlimited support tickets and migration and all the features we have for a price lower than, than this we are. We have a strategy to have a very low price. Um, we have always been much cheaper than the other, so uh, traditional ERPs are around 180 to one 210 for Microsoft Dynamics per user and per month. Uh, we are around uh, between $8 to $30, depending on the country. So we are already super cheap, and it's very difficult for us to, to do cheaper. What you can do is to go to Odoo Online. Odoo Online is a monthly payment instead of your yearly payment, so it's easier for the small companies because the Odoo Online offer is designed for the small companies. And um, and there is no minimum of five users or do, or do online. So the minimum of five users is only for do enterprise. And the advantage of do online is that everything works out, out of the box. So you you get um, uh, unlimited support. Uh, you install in one click. You just subscribe and it works and, and, and things like that. Uh, and I have a, an opposite cl question for Clever, which asks why free. Um, for us, open source is very important. Uh, we want to be the, main, the mainstream uh, ERP in the world, so have the majority of the user, because I think the world is consolidating. So every ERP software vendor is acquiring uh, other ones now. And in a few years, like in five years, probably there will be three to four players that will uh, have the majority of the users. And a good way to attract the majority of users is to have a very good free offer, and our open source offer is uh, this offer. Uh, the reason we have two millions of users is also because we have a very good open source version. So it's very important for us to support this. And also, um, more psychologically, or I, I don't know how to say, ethically, uh, we think it's good to contribute to open source. Uh, we, are, we, we can be proud of that. So I think we have one of the biggest contributors worldwide. Uh, there is not a lot of product with the size of Odoo. So we really like, and it's motivation also for, for us and for our developers. Faris, do you have a question? Thank you, Fabian. Um, I just wanted to complete my previous answer about localizations just for Arabic friends, uh, because I forgot to mention that we are also working on a better um, uh, considerations for right to left um, f features in, 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 the, in, the, in the font and, and the texts. So that's something we're also doing in the context of localization. Yeah, and to complete Hector, which is asking localization about Mexico. Um, we did everything about Mexico, including the electronic invoicing, links to the uh, PIC pack, uh, and everything requires for the government. But it's more for uh, either Odoo Online, it's already available in Odoo Online, or for the f version 11 of Odoo Enterprise. We don't plan, usually the new features are, are pushed in the new versions of Odoo, and we don't change the old version of Odoo because our existing customer prefers stability. Omar is asking about Python 3. Uh, this is uh, currently scheduled to be uh, released uh, together with version 11 in October. N no, guarantee. no guarantee. So we'll try, we do our best, we have people working on it, but usually uh, with everything in R&D, we don't guarantee anything. So... Um, Maybe I can, uh, I can uh, address another question, and that's a question about uh, getting to know more about the new appointment scheduling feature. Uh, so let me uh, get into that uh, with my screen. So uh, the I can I can maybe show you this. Uh, the uh, new uh, appointment scheduling is a way to um, uh, get your visitors on your website or your prospects or your customers um, to uh, schedule an appointment or a meeting with someone. Uh, in the company, uh, whether it's a salesperson, whether it's a customer success person, whether it's a, a customer service person, a support person. And um, we wanted to, uh, of course, keep it integrated with, uh, with Odoo. Uh, so we uh, took advantage of the website and, and uh, the calendar uh, features in the back end to, um, to, to make that bridge. So um, in the, uh, the, way it, uh, the, the way you can see it is that if you go to the website uh, module, you will uh, find at the bottom that we have uh, a link called uh, a new link called schedule appointment. And when I click on schedule appointment, uh, this is of course uh, a, a URL, a link that can be uh, pasted anywhere in your in your website. So when I get here, and, and it can be fully customized, just like any other uh, page of the website, I, I get the chance to edit this page and, and move building blocks and edit in line, just like anything else in the Odoo CMS. And when I um, 
get to this page, I have uh, the list of possible types of appointment uh, that are available that can be uh, modified. Uh, and for example, here I could talk to a business advisor or schedule a demo. I'm going to choose to schedule a demo. Uh, I will view the availabilities and here I see a calendar. And that's a calendar uh, with dates and also times when I click on a date that shows the availability of the people uh, who are capable of providing this, this service. In this case, um, uh, scheduling a demo, uh, providing a demo. So for example, if I select uh, June 12 at 9, uh, I get straight to the next page and the, la and the last page where I can fill in my name, my country, and so on. Again, this uh, form is uh, can be edited, uh, and, uh, and we have a form builder that allows you to do that with just uh, drag and drop. Uh, no need to be a developer here. And I also have a few um, specific questions just for the demo scheduling here. So for example, I could say I'm interested in the, in the CRM and e-commerce because that's, that's uh, one of the custom questions that was asked for uh, scheduling a demo. I'm also, in what industry am I? I'm, uh, I'm in the, uh, let's say, the uh, food industry. And I confirm my appointment. And when I do that, I get my uh, success um, a page, uh, I could, uh, as the as the aspect or as, uh, as visitor, I could see um, the uh, the various ways of to my calendar. Uh, and uh, what happens is that in the in the background in the uh, we have in the website the uh, appointments that are available, and I uh, have my two types of uh, appointments, and I have my schedule demo here. Uh, I made before this uh, meeting. So apparently, uh, I have a second one uh, here, a second point appointment. All, all the different ways of, of um, configuring this appointment. So I can say what would be the the average duration of a demo in this case, what, I what are the slots, who are the employees that are capable of providing a demo schedule. And I even have a direct link that my employees could put for for example, uh, in the signature of their email, is to, to um, uh, you know make it easier and smoother for for their um, for the people they talk to in order to um, uh, schedule um, meetings right in their calendar. And so when I go and look at my calendar to uh, the calendar app, I will find on the uh, I think it was the 12 or the or the 14. Uh, I will find my scheduled demo later. I was administrator as a visitor, so that's why. Uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, a calendar uh, invite straight in my calendar. So very useful uh, that you can uh, use for all kinds of different purposes. Uh, of course, together with a CRM and, and uh, with the sales modules for, for sales operations, uh, with prospects, with existing customers, um, and, uh, and, and also for customer service, making sure to uh, avoid the back and forth of asking, you know, when are you available? Um, I have those three slots and then have calendar conflicts afterwards. It's a lot of back and forth that we want to, uh, to eliminate here. So uh, very useful and also very, uh, a very, um, uh, very nice to facilitate the interactions with, uh, with customers and, and visitors. Uh, so that's that's more of the uh, more of an insight about the the, uh, the appointment scheduling, the new appointment scheduling, um, uh, which uh, is available available in the next SaaS release and will Question. also be, of course, available in uh, version 11. Okay. So next question from uh, Tamer. What sort of control do you have over other partners as some customers suffer from partner and maybe they ruin, ruin the product image? Um, yeah, it's a good question. So our strategy with the partner network is to be quite open in the partner we, we, we accept in the network. 
So we never know. We tried over the past to select the partners and go with those we, we, we thought were good and, and don't go with those we thought were not good. But it's nearly unpredictable. Sometimes you have very small companies that look like nothing and they are very good in implementation. They do very great projects. And sometimes you have companies that you meet for the first time. You say, oh, they, they, will, be, they will become a great partner. And at the end, they might fail one or two projects. And of course, it's strategic. Uh, what I can say is that first, we do have account managers that manage every partner. So they, they have regular calls with them. We have the certification, the training, the support. Partner can get support from us. Uh, customer get the support through Odoo Enterprise directly with us too. So customer can always contact us if they have a problem with a partner and we try to uh, find a, a solution for that. Uh, second, we do have a rating on the partner from ready to the silver to the gold. Um, and the best, the, the gold partner are ob obviously more experienced because they did more projects than the ready partners. Uh, but it's clear that we rarely eject partners from the network. So from years to years, we eject maybe 5% to 10%. This year, we did a little more than usual uh, of the partner, but not more because we want to stay uh, open. We really, but we work with the partner case by case when we fin find that, that, that there are some issues. I think it's not related to Odoo. Every software vendor have the same issue of controlling the quality of the service done on this product. Um, the real advantage we have at Odoo is that you can always contact us and work with us. Uh, we'll find a solution with you and the partner. That's uh, one thing. Uh, another question is, yeah, we do have a iOS application, uh, the iOS versions for iPhone users. Uh, I think I have a, I think I have a, a small preview if you want. Let's check. Uh, pass and me this today. Or you can even read my email if you want. <laughs> Close my computer. Ah, you don't show it. <laughs> okay. Um, where is it? Uh, I will just address a, a short question in the meantime. Someone is asking, um, how can I, or I is it? schedule or how can I make Odoo easier for my users? Um, one thing you need to know is that we have a full-time usability team working in Odoo and it's uh, entirely part of the R&D um, of, of the R&D process. Uh, everything that we add in Odoo goes through uh, a usability uh, verification and control uh, and uh, we, we have a lot of initiatives in uh, in, in the context of usability, like uh, doing user testing, um, abiding by uh, usability policies that we have written, um, you know, UI and UX uh, policies. Uh, and we believe that we've already uh, come a long way uh, if you look at, at the past uh, few versions. Uh, and uh, it is definitely, like you saw in the slides in the beginning, a, a very important focus for us to keep uh, going with usability uh, as a central part of, of the uh, development process and make Odoo easier and easier is uh, one of the critical um, points that, that we, that, that we want to focus on. Uh, so uh, the ease of use uh, is, is addressed like this in all R&D processes. Uh, we also are very uh, much listening to the feedbacks related to usability, whether it's uh, internal into Odoo or external from our customers and, and community members. Uh, so definitely you can expect to see uh, a big focus on usability and ease of use um, uh, going forward um, and still uh, just like today. Okay. So to answer my previous questions, here is a small presentation, an overview of the future iOS uh, iPhone app. So it's like the Android app we have today. So you just register. You have to register your server only the first time. So and once it's done, you the app launches just a click. So the first time it loads the all um, the JavaScript and the code of Odoo, and you will see that the the future uh, time it's so you see everything is responsive. You can click everywhere, open something, uh, go to a sale order, edit it. So you are in the on your um, uh, iPhone, huh? select a customer. You see that the customer selection widget is uh, very specific or the date selection widget is the native one. So you can easily change date like this. 
Uh, if I confirm this sale order like this, yes, I love notification. You see that the push notification are natives. Uh, uh, here, here it is, because I was following this sale order, I get a push notification. So, um, and uh, as you can see, maybe I was too fast. As you can see here, when you launch the app, the great thing with the mobile app, it's the same on our Android mobile app, is that when you click on it, it just launched very, very fast. So that was to answer about the mobile mobile uh, app feature. Maybe to complete the point about the usability, I should explain a little bit how R&D process work. So if I go to Odoo, so obviously we use Odoo to manage Odoo, and to build a better Odoo, so you have kind of a recursive <laughs> approach in the, a virtuous cycle. So if I go to my projects, and uh, uh, can you remove this, the black square? Sorry. Uh, if I go to my projects, I go to uh, r and I think, let's get to one of the R&D projects or, or R&D teams are structured in different teams. Here is uh, the steps a task should do to go uh, to different things. So it starts with a backlog, it's an ID, usually a feedback provided. Then we write a specification, it's the usability team, uh, product owners that do that. We have five product owners in Belgium. Then the specifications are validated by someone else, so we are sure that someone from the business or the technical side reviewed the task. Um, then, of course, we develop the new feature. It's tested one f with one team. We have one testing team in India, then tested with another team uh, in Belgium, and then we have a review with business guys and uh, other people. So we always do peer review. So you have at least three different people uh, that are not the developer that originally developed the task that work on it. And then only it goes to a merge, and the guys that merge test it too. And after we also have testing and testing phase um, uh, before a release. So we do for the Odoo Online one release every two months. So every two months, uh, the world here and is testing the software for a few days. Uh, you see, all, all developers have fun with some of the tasks. <laughs> There's some videos and, and things like that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, there is another question related to Odoo Studio. Um, questions like where can I download Odoo Studio? Or where is it available? Odoo Studio is part of Odoo Enterprise. Uh, if uh, if you get Odoo Enterprise, if you buy Odoo Enterprise, you will have access to the entire source code of Odoo Enterprise. Um, maybe uh, I can. It gives me the um, opportunity to show you a, a, a fairly recent uh, improvement to Odoo Studio, uh, and that's something to address uh, the question of. Um, uh, making modifications to reports. Uh, how how could you make uh, that? That's another question I saw. How can I make um, uh, tabular uh, changes to a report? So um, let's have a look at um, what we can do here. I'm in the um, I'm in the. Um, sorry about that. Okay. This is the first time we um, that I'm, kind of exercise. I'm <laughs> the I'm in the uh, list of invoice. So if I go to my accounting, uh, and I go to my invoices, um, I get to see my invoices in all kinds of different views. One of them is the ability to see a, a, a grid or a table uh, with my pivot invoices, table, a pivot table uh, with my different. Uh, invoice information that I can group by, drill down, uh, and slice and dice. Uh, one thing that I cannot do here is uh, see the country of the customer of that invoice. Uh, I have all kinds of different um, criterias and variables that I can group by. Uh, uh, I, could, I could group by all kinds of, of different fields, but the country of the customer on uh, of the invoice is not something I can do uh, uh, right now. So let's uh, let's make that change. Uh, I could come to any invoice and activate Studio, and um, just uh, drag and drop a related field. Uh, so if I drag and drop this field, uh, I will come up with a widget like this, and uh, w this is a widget that we have improved, uh, and that makes it much easier to. Um, get to a particular field, models after models. So here I'm going to find the uh, a partner of this uh, invoice. 
I'm going to click here, and then I'm interested to get the country of this um, uh, uh, of the customer, and then the country name. And so when I do that, it figures out the uh, little snippet code for for this particular field here. I confirm it will be added to my view, and uh, the um, uh, field here that I can modify customers country. And uh, I don't even have to keep that uh, in, in my view. I, I don't, if I don't want to have it there at all, I just want to use it afterwards. I, I can even remove it from, from here. Uh, but I have created my, customer, my, my um, customer's country here. And now when I go to my invoices and I go to my pivot table, uh, I can now um, find my customer's country here and actually use it as a new variable in my tabular data. Um, whether it's directly or part of a drill down, uh, it is here and available. So that's an example of a, of a recent uh, feature of the latest studio app. Um, it is available in the next SAS release. It will be version 11. And um, uh, the widget you saw is going to be helpful not only as soon for this particular but all kinds of other scenarios uh, related uh, to uh, findings to act field that I'm for you know those after models uh, that's very very helpful in the lead automation to um, define segments and very uh, useful soon as you want to write domains uh, you will not have to understand what a Python dictionary or list is uh, you can just use that widget to um, really uh, write the proper domain that you're interested in. Uh, and you don't need to be a developer for that anymore. OK, I have a question for, from Nicolina. What is the reason behind the, the fast release version? So typically, we have a release every year on Odoo Enterprise for on-premise users. And we do have a release every two weeks, every two months, sorry, for Odoo Online users. The reason is that users want the new feature. We improve things. There is a lot of great features in Odoo, and users want them. Uh, but we also guarantee that we maintain three versions, so at minimum three years of, uh, of Odoo. So if you want, you can only upgrade uh, once every three years. And for Odoo Learning user, we release a new thing where you can upgrade on demand and not every two months automatically. So you can decide on your rhythm. Of course, we ask a minimum. I don't know if it's, I don't remember if it's six months or one year. Um, but the main reason is that we have to move forward. It's a market that uh, is evolving very quickly. Uh, the, the strength of Odoo since the beginning uh, has been our ability to evolve. Fortunately, we don't have anymore the same product as what we had in version 5 or version 6. Everyone's happy to have version 10 today, and we'll be even more happy to have version 11, so it's important. Of course, upgrades are not easy. Uh, so that's the reason why we are probably the only software vendor in the world that includes the upgrade service as part of its uh, 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 subscription cost, um, Odoo Enterprise. So at no extra cost, we upgrade your uh, Odoo if you have standard modules. And if you have customized module, we have a service at $800 per 1,000 lines of code where we do the job for you of porting your custom modules that you developed to the new versions. So we port the module, we test, and we port the data. So it's a good trade-off uh, to, to, to make the migration more uh, cheaper and smoother, and on the other hand, to evolve faster to be sure that our uh, uh, customer can benefit from the new feature, and giving them three years to upgrade if they don't want to move as fast as the product is moving. Um, I, do you have something, Fabrice, a question? Um, a few uh, subsequent questions to uh, what I showed with uh, Studio. Uh, the you don't have to worry about whether the changes are persistent in the database because Odoo Studio will do all the uh, will take care of all the uh, best practice uh, of uh, development behind the scene for you. Uh, that means inheritance. That means um, no redundancies and, and, and all uh, these things. So um, uh, if you use Odoo Studio, it will. Um, survive upgrades uh, nicely uh, because everything is done behind the scene uh, properly for, for that. So I have a question here from Chimpul Chimpul. <laughs> uh, are you planning to release a white paper comparison between Odoo and SAP? 
Uh, actually, we already have that, so you can get to a white paper on the website. So if I go to odoo.com slash page slash docs, which is the top, you can go directly through the top menu documentation docs. And here in the bottom, you have some white papers where we compare with different software. You can get the PDF that compare different software or very specific ones. So if you want Microsoft Dynamic, NetSuite, oh, sorry, I'm bad. We don't, we don't have SCP. We only have a comparison with SCP Business One uh, on the MRP uh, white paper. So you can click here. And for every uh, white paper, we do have an analysis of the different uh, software, a detailed feature comparison, feature by feature. As you can see, it's pretty long. We, we, we spend weeks analyzing every software, screenshots, ratings on, on third party platforms, and, and here it is. And you can download the PDF if you prefer uh, to have a much cleaner uh, design. Thank you, Fabian. And there is another question that I think you can address as well, which is related to performance improvements with um, I in uh, version 11. Uh, I believe that we have been working hard on performance improvements, optimization of views, uh, decreasing as much as possible SQL uh, in the RPC calls. Maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so every version, we improve the performance. So Anthony showed that version 10, that we speed up everything by more or less two. Uh, in version 11, version 11 is not different. We have uh, a lot of improvements, especially in the web client. We did a very big refactoring of the web client from, uh, I would say, from scratch. But I'm not sure everything has been changed. But a lot of things have been changed. The number of RPC calls have been seriously reduced. Uh, the time to load the widget and to, to call the different operations have been re reduced. And we continuously work on improving every single operation uh, in terms of performance. So it remains one of our priority because first it's part of the usability and usability is our key priority in, uh, in Odoo. Uh, and Odoo is pretty fast. Huh? It's we, we are probably already the, the fastest ERP on, on the planet. Uh, but we think we can do better and it's important because as we said, we design software for the users and uh, when we improve the speed, we help the users. So if you can save 30 seconds when you do a full flow, uh, multiplied by 1,000, I don't know, sale order or package you have to ship per, and package you have to ship per day, it, it, it adds up and do a lot of savings for our users. Uh, there, is a, there is a question uh, related to uh, filters and can you save them? Uh, this is actually uh, correct. You can uh, save filters, so let me um, get there uh, real quick. Um, you can save filters like if you go to uh, any app and any view, um, you will be able to have a favorite um, menu here. So if you type um, a filter, you can multi-filter. Um, you can say that the salesperson needs to uh, have admin in their name. You can even group by uh, an order month. And if you are interested in that filter and reusing that filter, it's very frequent that users use between five and 10 filters very frequently, probably on a daily basis, depending on their role in the company. You can uh, click on favorite, save current search, and then give it a name. Um, my super filter, as an example. And you can use it by default every time you get in that in that screen, uh, or you can even share it with others. And once you save, it gets into your list of favorites. Um, one point of improvement on this feature uh, is that the uh, saving the pivot table now also saves not only the filter, but also the groups and the multi-groups and the slice and dice and of the table. And same for the graphs. Uh, and mm -hmm. same for the graphs. So we've improved, actually, the uh, favorites and the filters uh, saved in the system that save the entire context of your view. Um, one additional uh, mention here is that you can add any saved filter in your dashboard. Um, by using here, I, d I don't have that module installed right there, but uh, you, you can have your dashboard with a dashboard app straight from the uh, launch page. And you can also um, decide to have that dashboard appear every 
as soon as you get in Odoo. Uh, I have several colleagues that do that because it's very uh, convenient for them to uh, see uh, what are the list of you know subscriptions and projects and tasks and issues tickets that they are following um, every time they start Odoo. So having the dashboard as as a first page is an option and and convenient for some people. Okay. One question from uh, Vincent Parisis. <coughs> Does Odoo Studio change the source code of the application you customize or the XML file of the views or things like that? No, it does not. So if I, I go to, let's get an example on quotations <coughs> and I edit this, uh, this view. Uh, let's add some, I don't know, some text field here, here. Okay, and let's rename this field to my field. Here it is. When I do that, instead of modifying the existing source code or the XML view uh, of the system, Odoo Studio creates a custom module, so you can easily import and export this module. So if I go here, you see I have a export and import. You can even do it several times. So if you export, import, export, import, you can do some modification, re-export, re-import, and it updates your the others database uh, while, while you do that. So it's super efficient. Um, but you, and I will show you how it does. So now if I go to the views, <coughs> I have to switch in technical developer mode. Like this. <coughs> you will see that my customization has been done very cleanly. So it's much cleaner than if you do manually because when you do it manually, you might do some mistakes in terms of inheritances of views. Here, Odoo Studio does everything for you. So this field has been done very cleanly. So if I go to the XML of the different views, you see that I have my original view, but I also have a studio view here that comes and adds my field as an inheritance uh, of the other fields I connected to. So it's super clean. Uh, it creates the inheritance things for you. You can import, export, uh, and there is this mechanism for everything. So if you change a report, it will get sure that the report doesn't change. And whatever the view you change, if it's a graph view or pivot, or you you will have uh, the, the same uh, inheritance mechanism. There is a question uh, here about um, the. Uh, RDBMS uh, that we are using, we're currently using PostgreSQL. There is no other um, uh, database that we uh, currently support, and it's not in our roadmap to support any other at this time, like MySQL or MSSQL. Uh, we are extremely happy with PostgreSQL. It's, it's very powerful. Um, the uh, performance improvements that we can achieve on Odoo is actually not that related to um, uh, changing and switching over to another um, database management system. Uh, it's, actu it's actually related to what we are currently working on um, about performance, which is you know number of calls, views, and so on. Uh, so we, we have no plan to change the, uh, the PostgreSQL um, database system uh, at this time. Yeah, PostgreSQL is a very good database, uh, extremely performant. Uh, there is no reason today to go to another database, I think. Um, yeah, another question here about, can you give us an overview about the marketing campaign? So here it is, the new marketing campaign. So it's still under development, but I can show you uh, the update of our progress. So you have a new hub here, marketing automation. And when you click on this new hub, you can design campaigns. So you create a campaign, uh, an automation campaign. So let's automate a new, the pr processing of new leads. You could choose any model of Odoo. Uh, you can do that on sales, leads. And now you have a new domain editor. This one is super cool, I really like it. So you can create your own filters and domains with this domain editor. So you can filter on AD or the type of the, of, the, um, of the lead is a lead. And then once you have defined your segment, uh, every lead that, that is a lead and not an opportunity will enter to this campaign and now you have to create some activities. So let's create an activities to uh, first send an email. Here it is. So you decide it's an automated action or an email. The email will be sent six hours after the creation of the lead. Uh, and you design your email inline. That's super cool. You don't have to go to the back, the, the, the front end anymore. So here it is, an email, just a few seconds. You get your email template. 
You can filter also on who it should receive this email or not. So if you do an email in Spanish and one in French, you can filter based on the language of the user, or you can, here we'll filter on uh, only the leads that have no responsible, no salesman uh, set on the lead. Uh, you could create sub activities too. So if the, the customer answer or reply or open the email, so let's choose uh, if he uh, replies to the email or I click on one of the link of the email, we will automate an action which is increase the priority of the lead so that uh, the scoring will improve and the salesperson will be assigned. So you see how super cool it, it is to, to improve. So you have the small process that is here. Let's create another condition. If the customer replies to this email, then we will uh, do an automated action to assign the email to a salesperson that will answer to him. So you have here first email with an email template and two actions on click and on reply. Uh, save and close. So we have the first activity after six hours and we can create another activity maybe after 10 days, let's like a follow-up uh, follow uh, if he doesn't answer our first email. Um, so if after, let's say, 10, 10 weeks, uh, if it we have no answer, so we'll edit the domain and say if the it's converted to a lead, so if it's still a lead, and if it's not yet assigned to a salesperson, let's use this. Uh, no, we will mark the lead as lost. So here it is. You have a marketing campaign with automation. So you design a first email, then you have an on-click and uh, on on. Um, on reply email, and then you have a condition 10 weeks later to lose the lead if we don't have an answer. You can start your campaign, and now every new lead in the system uh, will be automatically uh, processed. So we can see we have 10 work items, 10 leads uh, here. And of course, you uh, can check the statistics. So let's move forward and uh, probably a few hours later, like six hours later, you get the full statistics for every step. So here, six hours after, we have uh, been six success sending on email, four reject, and <coughs> sorry, nothing has been uh, lost yet. So that's a new marketing campaign, pretty cool. It's super simple, uh, fully integrated with the mass mailing, and the you can use it for anything. You can use it uh, on your subscription app to automate <coughs> the renewal of the subscription. You can use it on your leads, ob ob obviously, or recruitment, or anything you want. Thank you, Fabian. Uh, another question that I saw is, is there an Odoo uh, student program? In fact, there is uh, an Odoo educational program uh, that is made for um, schools and universities. Uh, we already have hundreds of universities and teachers taking advantage of it. Uh, and you can find it uh, if you just Google Odoo education or Odoo education program. I think there is um, a link in the footer. And there might be a link in the footer of, of the homepage. And what this program is, is that we give the chance to teachers, typically in business, IT, uh, computer science, um, uh, uh, these, these kinds of degrees, but not only, uh, to have access to the Odoo Online platform and being able to create a, a course for their uh, classes. Uh, that uh, the, the, the advantage of it is that they get to create templates, uh, exercise and tests on those templates, and share it to their uh, students. So if you are um, a student or teacher or in the education um, industry or a staff member, education staff member, um, we uh, be aware that we have an education program and that you might be interested to uh, incorporate um, Odoo in uh, the courses of, of uh, one of your classes where you have access to Odoo online, you can create an account in, t in two minutes, uh, create a template of, a, of an instance uh, and share it. And uh, in fact, you can even decide to make it public or not. Uh, so if uh, I come here and I find the uh, view course, we, we will find all the templates made by all kinds of different um, schools and universities teachers for their classes that can be reused. Um, so we have all kinds of templates here. They can be searched. Um, so very, very useful, very nice, uh, and works um, around the whole semester or, or you know, um, quarter, uh, depending on, on the structure of your classes. Good. 
Thank you, Fabrice. I have a question from uh, <coughs> from Jonathan. So you can switch to my computer, maybe. Yeah. Uh, is all data secure in Odoo Online? Do we own our data or does Odoo? So yeah, first you own your own data. You can always download a backup when you want and go to Odoo Enterprise. We allow to switch one contract from another. We do have a lot of customers that start with Odoo Online because everything works out of the box. In just a few clicks, you get the unlimited support. And if they want some customization later on, once the project is in production, once they have used our service a lot to deploy the system, they can go to Odoo Enterprise if they want to host by themselves. And is all data secure in Odoo Online? I guess yes. So you can go to odoo.com slash pay slash security. And you have the full explanation of uh, our uh, SLA. So we have a backup and disaster recovery. We have 14 backups uh, of every subscription for three months. Once every day for seven days, once every week for four weeks, once every month for four, three months. We have the replication on three different machines for your, uh, for your backups. You can download at any time your, ba your manual backups through the interface, either an old one or the current one. In case of disaster that did not happen so far, um, we do have a RPO, recovery point of objective on 24 hours, or recovery time objective of six hours. So you can lose maximum 24 hours of work, but it's really if three servers crash at the same time in three different data center. So it never happened, but who knows? Um, in terms of database security, we have dedicated database for every customer, no sharing. Uh, we do have password security with PBK, DF2, SHA, uh, 512 encryption. Odoo staff does not have access to your password. It's completely encrypted. Everything goes through HTTPS. In terms of employee access, we have a selection of people that can access for support services but uh, on your data, but only a few ones. Uh, we do have system security, physical security, how do we manage the security of physical server, credit card security, communication, software security. Uh, we, everything is updated before, be every bug fix is updated before being, being released. And yeah, obviously the reason, the, the answer is Odoo Online is for sure much more secure than if you host it yourself. Why? Because it's our business. We have people updating the server every day for security issues. We have monitoring. We have replication of, of everything. We have uh, encryption. Uh, we have the top-notch security guys working on that. So if you try to do it yourself, uh, you'll probably le be less secure than what we offer on Odoo Online. Yep. So there is a question from Jay uh, saying, um, Odoo, uh, takes care of implementation uh, projects, uh, and therefore, isn't it a competition with partners? Uh, so the, the answer to this is no. And the, the reason is because we make a very clear distinction between what is a custom ERP implementation project versus what is uh, what we call a quick start implementation. A quick start implementation is a, a project that is going to be extremely close to standard and that is not going to require something such as uh, a server side Python uh, module. Um, so uh, we make a clear distinction between those two types of projects because the approach and the implementation methodology is very different for those two kinds of projects uh, and require different types of skills. Typically, in a custom ERP implementation project, you will need the whole chain of roles in such a traditional project, like a project manager, functional consultants, technical consultants, uh, developers, analysts, security system administrators, testers, and so on. Uh, whereas in a quick start implementation, uh, that is something that's going to be done with uh, one, maybe two uh, people involved, uh, and typically um, a, a functional expert who will take charge of the whole project from A to Z. Uh, typically, the, uh, the factor that will differentiate whether a company might go with one or another is its size, or at least its budget or its objectives with Odoo, what they want to achieve. Um, if they uh, are willing to be flexible and, uh, and address 90% of their needs um, uh, and, and, uh, and go with a quick start approach, which is going to be faster and cheaper, then quick start might be a good fit for them. Whereas if they are 
uh, if they are the ambitions to their the, the means to their ambitions and uh, want to make a lot of modifications, are very picky on how the workflows and behaviors need to uh, to work out. Uh, then a custom ERP implementation will be the right fit. And we make a clear distinction here between uh, uh, what we do and what the what uh, what is the business that we. Um, uh, for CEO or partners do less than one percent of our revenues, uh, so that there might be one or I mean a, a couple exceptions, but really less than one percent of our revenues is done on uh, custom ERP implementations here. So our focus as a vendor is certainly not to be a, a, an ERP integrator. Um, we used to be that before 2009, 2010, when we started the company, uh, because that was our way to bootstrap the company. But since then, we have uh, refocused quite dramatically uh, in that yeah. direction. To, to, to complete what you say, Fabrice, you have to understand that it's two different markets. Um, some companies, uh, the small ones, they don't want to buy services. They just want something that works out of the box. They are today using Trello or MailChimp, and they want to subscribe to or do and start using it right away. Of course, ERPs are a little bit more complex if you start to talk about accounting. So they need a little bit of service, but it's more support. So they, are they don't want services. And our partners are services companies. They sell services. They sell mandates to develop, to do the implementation. So those companies will just want to buy a product. And that's where our online uh, act is that we provide this customer the minimum service required. So we try to not sell mandates and development and things like that, but the minimum so that they can use uh, or do with the support they need. In the other hand, some companies need services, uh, usually the bigger ones, b bigger than 50 users. They need custom development. They need help because they, it requires to change the, well, the, the way the system works to adapt to the way the company works. They need some training, internal trainings. So for those companies, uh, a bit bigger ones, um, the partners are very good and they do hold the service. So as we have two different segments of market, small companies, they don't want services. So obviously, they will not want to work with a partner. So that's where Odoo Online, uh, we offer direct solution to them. And for the ones that need services, we push them to partners because uh, it, it, it's their core business and they are better than us at doing uh, complex implementations. So I have another question from uh, Arun. Maybe you can switch to my computer, Fabrice. Um, is there Excel reporting capability? Yeah, of course, you can export everything in Excel. We also have Google spreadsheet connector, so you can pull data from Google uh, directly to uh, to uh, Odoo. And you can do that also on the pivot table. So if I go to Odoo, let's go here. Let's get a, a reporting on my pipeline like this. You can do it from the graph. Or so let's go here, and I would like to do a, a uh, an ex um, expected closing months by months and then by country. Maybe, maybe I will switch like this and I want to drill down on the months of June and have the different opportunities by stage. So you create your own report uh, as a base in Odoo and in one click here, you get an access file. Oh, I'm in the development version, but you get an access file when you click there directly as it is in your screen. Um, next question from Said for help desk. What's new in version 11? For help desk in version 11, we have added uh, everything about timesheet, integration, billing of help desk tickets, follow up of the contract. So if you have a support contract uh, that opens and then close, we manage this and uh, the link of the tickets with the contract. So it's mostly about timesheet, billing, uh, links to project management. Also, you have a cool thing in the, the integration with the chatter. So let's say I'm doing live chat with customers on my um, Odoo.com instance, so let's talk to Fabrice. Uh, Fabrice. Testing. You are here, and he asked me some great question. Uh, you can do slash help desk. Help desk. Uh, maybe we don't have it on the production database. And you can, ah, oh, it's, it's only on live chat. So if you talk with the live chat on the customer, you can do slash help desk. Uh, give a name to your slash ticket. Oh, maybe it's slash ticket. Slash lead, slash lead, slash who. In the new version, you will have slash ticket and it creates an help desk ticket for you. Or, or you can attach the discussion to a ticket, so it's very efficient. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next question from Will we be able to sell module? Yes, you can sell module on Odoo Apps. So all the Odoo modules are odoo.com slash apps. And from here, you can publish your open source module or your paid modules uh, the way you want. So you just click on Submit here, and you push your modules, and there is an explanation on how you can sell it. Uh, 
and and just to be complete about the future of partners and community members interested in selling uh, modules and 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 services uh, with Odoo, the uh, path that uh, Fabian mentioned in his slides will also open up the uh, w the door to additional ways of selling your modules and uh, address an audience that's going to be larger. Maybe Fabian wants to to. I was not listening to what you okay, said. Okay, not a problem. <laughs> um, I was looking at my chat and so, so the, the, the question the, from Luis. The, <laughs> um, sorry, the, uh, the pass will give you access to a lar probably a larger audience and will allow you to have uh, different types of access on the platforms that your customers are using. So uh, that might open the door to additional possibilities okay. for people interested in setting modules. Okay, so I have a new question here from Luis. How can I recover my password? On Audio Online, you cannot uh, recover your password because it's encrypted. So the only thing you can do is to change your password. Um, so you can send, it sends an email, you have to click on the email and change your password. Uh, uh, how many companies can Audio handle in a single instance? Question from Yannick. Oh, we, the, the biggest customer has 350 users. I think the, it, it's not a um, number of companies or users are not very important that because... I, I think that's 350,000 users. Uh, 350,000 um, and yeah. 50,000 concurrent users. The number of companies doesn't change, so there is no price per extra company. So if you have a group of 200 or 1,000 companies, I don't think it's a problem for do uh, what's, what consume CPUs or memory is the number of transactions you do. Uh, and we do have a lot of customers with millions of transactions a day. So, uh, so in, in terms of companies in one database, there's not really a limit. Just uh, as for everything, it all depends what users are doing. Uh, but y we have customers with 50 different companies in the same database uh, because it's a holding or group of companies uh, and, and even more. So uh, not a problem with that. We have franchises. We have groups and holdings. Um, now, if by instance you mean hardware from a hardware standpoint on one machine, uh, how many uh, database is it possible to run on one machine, whether you are hosting with uh, Amazon Rackspace, OVH, or any other, uh, or, or your own, um, well, we, it, it, it gets back to uh, the question about how do you configure uh, your hardware and all the different layers um, below Odoo, or I should, I should say, yeah, below Odoo. Uh, like database, um, uh, reverse proxies, and, and so on. And, uh, and we have machines where we have uh, thousands of instances that run uh, super nicely. So it's really a m system administration question and, and uh, hardware tweaking question. But we have never faced uh, an issue uh, in that regard. And uh, even if we need to go beyond that, uh, load balancing is, uh, is absolutely an option as well. Question from Arundt. Is there an ability to export reports to Excel, uh, like the balance sheet? Yes, so you can always go to any report in Odoo, whether it's profit and loss, a balance sheet. So let's do a balance sheet with a comparison over a few periods, um, like this. Like this, uh, you can change your option, change the date. OK, you have your report. And you can print preview gives you a PDF. You can even annotate it before or you can export to Excel and you get an Excel sheet like this. Uh, we are, here it is. So we are working on the look and feel of the Excel, but uh, we know we can improve it, but it's already good, I think. Um, and you get this on every report uh, of Odoo. Uh, question for Marmadou. What is the Odoo strategy for managing large volumes of data? Um, Usually, we, one of the things we look for when we design the software is to be sure that the complexity, the, the, I don't know if you know the big O notation, the complexity of every method we uh, implement is O of N and not O of N square. Um, that way, uh, if we do that, it means it scales. So we periodically review all the code that is produced to be sure we don't complex uh, square complexities in our algorithm. Uh, and so we have tests. So the idea is that if you list uh, a certain number of records, or if you process a certain number of records, like validating 10 invoices or uh, listing 100 invoices or validating 1,000 invoices, uh, the number of uh, the complexity means that the number of operations we do, usually we try to be on all of one, means that if you list 10 invoices, maybe you will have 
like seven or eight RPC or uh, no, not RPC, sorry, SQL queries. But if you list 1,000 invoices, you will still have seven uh, SQL queries. So how do we design, uh, because of the ORM and because we take care of every algorithm you write, uh, so that the complexity can manage as easily big, big volumes of data or simple volumes of data? Of course, the time to compute in Postgres uh, depends on the volume of data, but you are pretty good on that compared to all the other software. Thank you, Fabian. And there is another, another th question related to multi-website. Uh, we actually started a a task for supporting multi-website. Um, we don't know yet if, if it will be in version 11. And uh, it is actually a task that supports not only multi-website, but together with a multi-company. Um, and this task uh, takes care of multi-themes and multi-domains. Uh, so if uh, uh, considering that was part of the question, here it is uh, for the multi-website uh, topic. Um, not sure in version 11, but um, we're, it's in the roadmap. Question from uh, Arun. Is the mobile app compatible with customized views and logic? Yes. So the mobile app is actually an hybrid app. So we have all the native feature of your mobile phone, like the push notification, the, the date selector widget, or that kind of things. But it's also fully integrated with the it's a hybrid, so we also have the Odoo web client behind. So everything you do in Odoo Studio or in custom develop modules that you develop directly works perfectly on the mobile uh, app uh, with the clean, responsive design. So that's one of the beauty and the magic of Odoo is that no extra effort and you have a mobile app. And I have a follow-up question for... And, and just to finish on the, uh, on the mobile app, um, we, so we are working on the iOS app like Fabian showed. We already mm. have an Android app for enterprise uh, users. Uh, and the browser also allows you to work with responsive design, uh, community and, enter and enterprise uh, cross-platform. So th that's very convenient. Works also with custom modules. So even without the mobile app, you can get So even without a native yeah. app, you uh, have a functional way of working with Odoo on the go on your mobile, community and enterprise, cross-platform, works with custom modules. Yeah. Community is not responsive. Uh, question from Chris uh, Wilson. Odoo is an excellent product, yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> but my small business can justify annual partner cost. I guess you want to sell Odoo and not to use it. Um, of course, you don't expect it for nothing. Ideally, I would pay to study for certification and not to become a partner once qualified. Um, every partner has a cost for us. It's not a source of revenue. Uh, I think the, the expense we have on managing the partner network, supporting them, creating content for them is higher than the revenue we get from the partnership fee, which is only uh, 3 to 4K uh, per year. So we can difficultly go lower than that. But you don't need to be a partner to offer services on the do. A lot of companies are offering services on the do. Of course, it's not um, the best way to do it. And uh, some customers prefer to have an official partner because it's a guarantee that he has been trained, he gets support from us. But uh, Odoo is still an open source software. You can still buy Odoo Enterprise and our license allows you to sell Odoo uh, even though you are not a partner. And if you want to learn uh, before starting so selling services uh, to your customer, you can also access the training platform on training.odoo.com. Um, where you get all the exercise, it's only $125 per month or $1,000 for one year access with unlimited users. And you get videos, uh, exercise books, uh, a lot of things. Uh, and actually, there is extremely good rating because all the ratings we get were five star, not a single one um, with uh, less than five star. And most of the modules are covered uh, with exercise book, videos. Most of them are videos. Huh? from accounting to studio, purchase, inventory, MRP, uh, e-commerce, so the studio is new. And we are continuously adding new uh, training material there. So it's a good way to start with Odoo, just subscribe there. You also have a free trial. So you see all the small free here uh, on the right of uh, each videos. It gives you, with the free trial, you can get access to these resources so that you can test our training platform even before subscribing. I think it's a good way to start. You start there, you buy the, uh, the, the small fee for, for getting access to the Odoo functional, you will be able to buy the certification too. The price will be 250 euros or dollars, I don't know, or maybe 300 dollars. Um, but it's going to be released in one week only. But of course, when customer calls us, we will always recommend a partner and not to work with another official partner, but we are very open so that we allow everyone to enter in the system. 
There is a question about, uh, is it possible to change the sales order lines in a WYSIWYG fashion? Uh, I, I'm assuming that you're asking in terms of Odoo Studio, can you modify the way a sale order line uh, in the sale order uh, contains, like what kind of fields are there? Can I change the columns of my sales order lines? Uh, if that's your question, so with Studio, it, is, uh, it, it was not possible uh, until, until recently. Uh, it will be part of a, of a future release of Odoo Studio. We're working on uh, the ability of modifying uh, those kinds of, of fields, so the sales order lines or the subscription lines or any, um, uh, basically, uh, many too many or one too many in, in those form views. Um, another question is related to the uh, point of sale roadmap. Um, and in fact, there were more than one questions about this. Uh, the probably most anticipated uh, feature for the point of sale is EMV card reader, so the readers for the, ch the cards with chips. Uh, this is something that is not available right now standard. There are a couple, just a, a few uh, modules, uh, custom modules uh, from the community. Uh, it is th that particular feature, the EMV card reader, is actually uh, something that we want to work on. Um, not sure it will be v available for version 11, but it, it is certainly the uh, what we have identified to be the most anticipated features and, uh, and, and, and the one that people need the most. Um, we are also looking into making sure that it can be as reusable as possible, uh, selecting devices that are common uh, and, and affordable for, for communities and, and available in uh, different continents and countries. Uh, so uh, as always, we want to have the most generic and, and affordable uh, and reusable um, way of working so that uh, additional devices can be added uh, and that the standard ones that you can find on our website actually um, uh, for, for the point of sale. You can find a point of sale hardware recommendations on our website. Uh, other points of the point of sale roadmaps uh, that, are, that are unsure but that are on our radar right now are related to um, uh, the, the price list. Uh, it's, actu it's actually something that is about to be merged. Uh, so multi-price lists in one point of sale um, session, meaning you have VIP customers and regular customers, and some of them needs to have a special price list applied to them. Uh, so that's that will be available for version 11 for sure, and in the next SaaS release. Uh, other roadmaps for point of sale uh, might include um, double steps tips management, especially for the North American market, and um, the uh, uh, yeah, I, I think those ones are, are the top ones. There are a few others, but um, they are uh, not the highest priority in the roadmap right now. Okay. I have a question about multi-website here. So, Odoo used to support uh, multi-websites, so the, 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 the features are there in the software, but it's so complex that usually we don't recommend it to our customers. Some partners I know are doing multi-websites. But you have to know that we are working now on uh, more out-of-the-box multi-website feature. Uh, we already started the prototype. Uh, and it's possible, not sure, that we will release something for version 11. I also have a question from Gabriel. Uh, do you have an offline iOS or Android mobile app? No, because uh, we want to have a mobile app that supports all the features of Odoo 100% and that adapts to your custom uh, and, and things like that. But uh, as usual, when you go to the committee, you get some of uh, some good things. So I think it's called Mayodo. So you have you can check uh, some committee apps. We do have a lot of committee apps for mobile app, and this one Mayodo uh, for both uh, iOS and Android support the offline mode. So it has its pros and cons. So it doesn't support the customization. It doesn't have all the features of Odoo. But if you want like CRM with leads and opportunities or partners, it's pretty efficient to just use this app and uh, you get the offline mode. Uh, we do have synchronization uh, in the standard um, mobile app of Odoo. We do have synchronization with your contact and calendar. So it's kind of a, an offline mode uh, to save your contact and calendar, but that's it. For the rest, you have to use a community app. And then there is a next question from Ray about uh, taxes Hello, Ray. Uh, <laughs> and tax cloud. Um, the, uh, is it a priority? Um, it is absolutely a priority. Uh, 
there are two, uh, three things that we have been working on recently. Uh, apart from, so the first one is related to making sure all the flows and all the corner cases scenarios are complete. So we have been uh, fixing a number of things in that regard in, in the context of uh, tax cloud for the US market. The second thing that we are um, working on is uh, related to the localizations. Uh, and where uh, taxes is uh, comes in play, the API to uh, taxes services for the various countries that we mentioned earlier that are focused for localizations is part of that localization work. And then the third aspect uh, that makes taxes uh, important is, uh, or a third demonstration that it's important to us is that we also intend, uh, and we have, we we are starting a, a task related to avat avatax. Uh, for the uh, U.S. market to move that to uh, core, so to the standard Odoo. Uh, and we intend to have that <coughs> available in version 11 uh, as part of the core standard modules as well. So uh, it is important and we are working on it and we, we, uh, uh, we agree with, uh, with that. Fabrice, I think uh, I have a question for you here. Um, Oh, is it possible to customize the CSS and the look and feel of the website builder? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so answer is yes, it is now possible. Um, if we look at the uh, latest version of uh, Odoo, I'm here in master actually, uh, I can go to the website. So what I'm going to show you is available since certainly SAS 16, maybe SAS 15, if you are a SAS uh, user, uh, and uh, it has been merged, so you will have that in version 11 when version 11 comes out. Uh, if I go to my website, I used to only have access to uh, the HTML editor when I go to customize. Uh, so the, uh, now it's, it's an HTML and CSS editor. Uh, when I click on this, uh, it might look familiar because it looks similar to before, um, but if it loads, okay, I'm going to switch to another one. I was in a development environment, so, you know, live sessions and live tests are always a fun time. Uh, HTML and CSS editor will open up the uh, panel on the side like before, but now we have the choice between the uh, HTML and the CSS. Or so actually, it's less, so you can even use expression and variables. So the CSS is generated through less, um, and uh, you can uh, access the uh, CSS style sheets that are uh, used uh, here. Uh, I have the list there. I can search uh, to get them uh, straight from here, and. Um, uh, as you might know, Odoo has a basis that is uh, that works with Bootstrap. So I have not only access to the regular Bootstrap classes and and uh, features here, but I also have the additional core standard CSS style sheets and the ones that you might want to create or, or modify straight from here. So um, it is now available. Uh, it is available in SAS 15 and later. It will be available in version 11. Uh, very convenient uh, uh, to to modify uh, this here, and and it's now accessible. It was not the case before. Thanks, Ferris. So I have a question about the future of Odoo community. It's a question we often have um, uh, because people are afraid that we stop the Odoo community module. So maybe I should explain something very important here. Um, is the way we designed Odoo community. So the way we design Odoo community and Odoo enterprise is to work this way. Some software vendors, they have a community version and another product that is an enterprise version. Uh, and it's sometimes a fork or sometimes two different products. The, the problem with this is that um, this, this, this design is that the software vendor is always, um, yeah, always have to choose between improving one on the other product. And depending on the financial conditions or depending on their willingness to contribute, they may invest here and, and there. When we designed our Odoo community and Odoo enterprise business model, we did something else. We decided to have Odoo enterprise fully rely on Odoo community. So the way we structure both product here is to have Odoo community here. Uh, and in Odoo enterprise here, 
is a set of features on top of other community. So as an example, if you in other community you you have uh, features like of course the CRM, the billing, the invoicing, the uh, stock management, MRP, um, sale, point of sale, and so on. And in Odo Enterprise, you have extra feature, yeah, like full accounting. Accounting is not really accounting. Uh, mobile, timesheet, uh, subscription management, design, and so on. The good thing with this business model is that if all the product that your customers or paying customers are using is, is using is this one, the full product. So it means that when we improve Odoo, even if we want to improve it only for a paying customer, let's say we have paying customers that report bugs on the CRM or that wants us to improve the usability in general of the system, uh, the good thing is in order to improve our product, we have to improve here and here and here because it's the full st uh, when you use Odoo Enterprise, it's the full stack, which, which is great because by design, we guarantee to the community that the software will always evolve and evolve fast. Um, uh, because the only way for us to improve is to improve the community edition and the enterprise edition for the very specific module. So I th we think it's a great open source design that guarantees the community to have a product that is evolving. And at the same time, you know, it allows us to create extra value for our Undo enterprise customer um, so that we have something to sell. And it's very important to have something to sell, obviously, because it's uh, because we have Odoo Enterprise that we get money to invest in research and development and around between 75 and 80 percent of our development effort are pushed in the community so it guarantees that we can contribute a lot over the long term because we are profitable and we grow our r d teams um, i can show you this uh, i can show you this one of the slides uh, i started with on my computer if you check here the statistics Um, it, depending if you check in terms of number of people contributing on, or number of, of uh, commits, uh, these are two different statistics, but 81, between 75 and 81 percent of our effort op over the last 30 days are done in Odoo Committee and the rest, 25 percent, is done on Odoo Enterprise. So we think it's fair and we like it because we, have, uh, we are an open source company, one of the biggest contributors of open source in the world, probably not the biggest, but one of the. Um, yeah, so by design, uh, you should stop being afraid of that we stop committee. And maybe one thing I should add is that we have the what we call the Las Vegas rule here in Odoo, is that everything that is in community stays in community and everything that is in enterprise stays in enterprise. So basically, we try to not remove feature from community or not remove feature from enterprise. So usually the scope remains the same. Of course, product evolves. So from time, from version to version, we had or remove feature. It's the natural things of product evolution. Uh, it happens that a feature disappears or reappears. Uh, but it's not a strategy for us for sure uh, to reduce one or the other app. Thank you, Fabian. And uh, a few questions. Uh, Question on the certification that we mentioned earlier. The type of certification that it is is a functional certification. So for um, product experts, uh, we do not evaluate in this certification uh, your um, coding and programming skills. It is uh, feature and functional oriented. Uh, and uh, the, it will be available with the, uh, together with the e-learning platform. Um, another question, real quick, as a reminder, version 11 is uh, scheduled to be released early October of this year. Uh, and uh, just also for uh, the question of JALX, um, if you buy version 10, you have the upgrade to subsequent versions included in uh, your uh, subscription. So uh, you will get version 11 if you buy version 10 because you will have access uh, to the upgrade services that will uh, move you from version 10 to version 11. Okay, I have a question here from uh, Rui Pedrosa, Franco. Why do people care so much about being a partner? <laughs> I think it's a fun question, but um, the reason why companies become a partner, I think it's because customer wants to work with partners. When you are a customer, you want to work with an official partner. You don't want to work with a company that did not prove it works. You have the guarantee that you can contact to do and ask feedback about this partner. You have the guarantee that he follow trainings and certification in the future. 
Uh, and it's very important for an implementation project. So the reason why people want to become a partner is because they want to please their customer first. And uh, it has a real value in terms of visibility. Of course, there is the advantage of being a partner, like having a small discount on the enterprise from 10 to 20 percent, or uh, getting access to the support, an account manager, pre-sales help. But the main reason, the main driver today is that customer wants to work with partner, and I understand that. I also think uh, I don't have statistics, but it would be interesting to see uh, success and failure of projects, depending if it's a partner or not. It's very difficult to get, but if one day we can see it. But uh, obviously, uh, partners are usually mo more qualified. Uh, usually, people become a partner once they get, when so do become their part of their core business. 50% of our partner network uh, do more than 50% of their revenue on uh, Odoo. So usually when you work with an unofficial partner, he's doing side projects. Uh, and when you work with a real partner, it's, it's his core business. And it's very important because ERPs are complex and the quality of the project manager you have may be a success or a failure to a project first, but most especially can reduce the, the price of the project by three or four very easily if he takes the right decision. Okay, I think we can close to we can close here. Huh? We yeah, already it's it's, uh, it's ten. So it's ten a.m. here, Pacific time in San Francisco. Um, I propose we we finish this session, this Ask Us Anything session for today. Uh, I wanted to to thank everyone to to come yeah. uh, to this session. As I mentioned, um, one thousand views. Thank you, guys. We we yes just just, just crossing the <laughs> one thousand views right now. Uh, the uh, for for the future, our goal with this format is to uh, to do those sessions either every month, every uh, twice a month maybe uh, I in different contexts. Whether it's an ask us anything session, whether it is a, a live support, maybe it is um, an interviews or demonstration of new features. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel um, we will uh, we will send uh, reminders uh, keep an eye on Odoo events on odoo.com slash events for our other webinars and uh, overall events and we hope to see you um, at Odoo experience uh, in Belgium from October 4 to October 6th that's a Wednesday Thursday Friday for uh, our annual conference with uh, over 100 uh, sessions across something like six or seven tracks uh, and, and the whole Odoo ecosystem, partners, community members and staff will be there. Yeah, sorry if we couldn't answer every question. We had so many questions today. So let's meet in the next uh, Ask Me Anything. We definitely want to go more because I think it's good to for the people to ask directly the question to the manager or to the developers of Odoo. We can do that with different people. So feel f don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated. And let's see, Fabrice, you can do a fade out with the <laughs> mixer. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you very much, you guys. Bye-bye.